Hi, I'm Jeremy Pearsons. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Today, my grandmother Gloria Copeland and her guest Billy Brim are going to continue talking about the glory of God being the manifested presence of God. And we see the story of God's glory woven all throughout the Bible. And today, we're going to find out where the glory of God resides and how it's destined to manifest in these end of days. And 2 Corinthians 3.18 says that we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So right now, I want you to get your Bible and join Gloria Copeland for today's Bible lesson. Hello, everybody. I'm Gloria Copeland. We're back with more wonderful words about the body of Christ, about the glorious church. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Billy Brim's with us from Prayer Mountain in the Ozarks, and she's stirring us up. So don't miss any of these broadcasts. Tell us, Billy, what well, what Gloria, today. you know, I wish everybody had been with us last week because we talked about the glory of God and how I came to study it. And when I studied it in depth, I, I came to see that the Bible is the story of the glory. Yes, it is. And that when he made Adam, he crowned him with glory. And then when God came in the evening, because Adam wore the glory, the, the glory of God is the presence of God. Yes. He wore it as a crown. He wore it as his clothing. But then when Satan tempted him, he fell from the glory. Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come yeah. short of the glory. And then when God mm -hmm. came walking in the uh, garden, he said, where are you, Adam? He knew where he was. He said, I, we, I hid myself. We hid ourselves. Didn't who, work. <laughs> no. Who told you you were naked? Well, they weren't naked before. They wore glory. Yeah. But since man fell from the glory, he can... Lot. He can no longer garment. abide God. He can no longer stand God. God's presence is too much for him. That's right. So God really had to separate himself from his children. And he was separated for more than 2,000 years. And uh, then the glory reappeared, the presence of God. Moses was out there and he saw that burning bush. Yeah. And then he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt under Moses. And he said, now bring them out here to this mountain. I want to meet with them. This is close as he's gotten because earth's under a curse. So he cleans them off the top of that mountain and I mean fire, lightning spews. Ooh. And he said, now you children of Israel, you stand back. Don't come up here close. You could get hurt. And so mm. then Moses goes up into the cloud. He gives him the written word. Thank God I'd hate to live oh, before you had the written my. word. Goodness. But then he says to Moses, first thing, Exodus 25, have them bring me an offering. And what I want to do with the offering is I want to make a place where I can meet with them. I want to dwell among them. Hmm. And it's called the Ochel Moed. It's, it's the tent of meeting. And so Moses, he was told exactly how to do that tabernacle. He was, he saw the pattern of it and he did it. And so we come to this wonderful line, Exodus 40, 33, so Moses finished the work. Then, when the work is finished, yeah, when it was finished, the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting mm. because the cloud settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Praise God. The presence of God. Yes, amen. Now they move then from the tabernacle. They, it, they have that tabernacle. It's in uh, Shiloh for uh, 369 years. But then God has always told them there's a place for it to be that he's going to put his name. And they discover, David discovers that place and it is the Temple Mount. Today we know it as the Temple Mount, Mount Maria. Now, because we are right smack dab in the middle of the Feast of Tabernacles. And that's when this happened, Sukkot, as it's called in, in, by the Hebrews. I'm going to read what happened exactly this time of year, exactly this week. Hmm. So now they're going to move the glory. They're going to move this uh, Ark of the Presence, it's called Ark of the Presence. Mm -hmm. and, and the Shekinah glory was seen over it, you know, all the time. They're going to move it into the temple. And so I'm going to read this. In carefully, very carefully. Very carefully. They've learned their lessons. Second Corinthians, uh, Chronicles, excuse me, Second Chronicles 5.1, 
Thus all the work that Solomon did for the house of the Lord was finished. You have to get to that line that the house is finished. Yes, amen. Second Chronicles 5.11, And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course, 4,000 of them. Mm. Also the Levites, the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, of Yedithan, with their sons and their brethren, arrayed in white linen and having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar and with them 120 priests sounding with shofars. It came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one Mm -hmm. to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord saying, for he is good. Yes. For his mercy yes, endureth his mercy forever. Endures forever. For he is good. They did it over and over. His mercy endureth forever, antiphonally. Then the house was filled with a cloud. Praise God. Even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord oh, had filled. The Praise house you, Jesus. Of God. The glory filled the house. Oh, now, yeah. what a day. Here we are. Come down to the new covenant. Come down to the letters that tell us about the church. Mm-hmm. And here we see in Hebrews chapter 3 6, but Christ is the son over his own house. Oh. The anointed one is a son over his own house, whose house we are. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. So now there's another house for the glory. This one isn't in a tabernacle. This one isn't in a fixed location of a tent. This house can walk around. And talk. And talk. Preach. And preach. Hallelujah. And this house is made up of new creations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are told in the word of God, 1 Corinthians 3, 16, we are told that we are a house. And I'm going to turn there. I have part of it down here, but Gloria, I'm going to turn back and read it out of my word here. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Actually, um, yeah, 1 Corinthians. Yes. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Know you not? that you are the temple of God? Don't you know? Don't you know that? Mm -hmm. And that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Yes, amen. Which temple you are. Praise. Sometimes I think this is lost on Westerners. Yes, I agree. They don't really realize the holiness of a temple. What is holiness? It means set apart. Here we have strawberries. Mm -hmm. So if I take this strawberry and set it over here, I cut it out from those other strawberries. And let's say we're going to give this one to Ken, Ken Copeland. (laughs) So this is cut out and set apart for Ken. The temple of God is holy. We are the church. We are taking out of every tongue every tribe, and we are separated into an ecclesia, an assembly, Mm -hmm. and we're separate. You're supposed to be separate. You're not supposed to be in bed with the world. You're supposed to be knowing God lives in me. I'm the temple of God. The Spirit of God lives in me. Look at the next time that uh, Paul talks about this, um, 1 Corinthians 6. And he's going to talk about um, some sin uh, that's come about. We'll start with verse 15. Know you not that your bodies are the members of Christ, the anointed one? Remember what Ephesians says, you're bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. That's right. Know you not that your bodies are members of the anointed one? Shall I take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? You know, he's talking about like sexual sin. 
God forbid. Oh, brother. I just heard of another preacher who's been into some stuff for years and years that has to do with pornography. Mm. Don't you know that when you're sitting there, if you're really born again in front of that television and that computer where you drew it up, that pornography, the Holy Ghost is in you. That's right. Paul would say, what's the matter with you? Don't you know you're a temple? I'm telling you, you bring the wrong things into the temple. You bring the wrong things into the Holy of Holies in the Old Testament, you're dead. So what happens to you in the new? No power, no glory. He cannot rise up in you degree by degree. You might still be born again, these things in your flesh, mm-hmm. but you're not going to have the glory Mm-mm. and you're not going to have the power. You're not going to have the blessing. You're not going to have the blessing. Mm-mm. You can't. God can't bless it. Know you not that your bodies are the members of the anointed one? Shall I then take the members of the anointed one and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? That's what Paul says. What? Know you not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. That's sexual sin. My daughter Shelley always says, it's hard to fornicate when you're fleeing. (laughs) <laughs> Flee fornication. Run. 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 Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that commits fornication sins against his own body. Now, what's so wrong with this? Here you get another what from Paul. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy oh, Ghost, Lord Jesus, yes. which is in you, which you have not of God. You are not your own. You don't belong to you. That's right. You're bought with a price. What is that price that you're bought with? The blood. The blood. The blood of Jesus on that cross. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You know? That's our responsibility. That's our responsibility. That's our job. It's your job, Gloria. Mm -hmm. And you do a good job of it. Praise God. You do. And Ken does. Well, well, you have to work at it because it doesn't come naturally. Yeah. You're turned the other way. But if you you follow God and you listen to Him, you put your eyes on His Word, get it down in your ears, get it down in your heart, and set yourself to do what it says, it, it works. It works and He changes you then. It changes you. From one degree of glory to the next. So that you can have uh, a more of God manifest in your temple. That's right. We grow. We keep growing. And that's what the world... If we do it right, we keep growing. It's written. Mm -hmm. And the world is looking to see God in men. That's their greatest need. That's their greatest need. That's right. They need to see a glorious church. They need to see a church manifesting God. That's right. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now we go to 1 Corinthians 6. And we're, uh, no, no, now we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 6. Okay. These are all kind of in, uh, you know, uh, an easy order to remember. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 Corinthians 6, 2 Corinthians 6. So here he's talking about it again. And he says in verse 4, Be ye not, or is that 14? 14. Verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And that word fellowship means working together as partners and partakers. So what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion has light with darkness? What concord hath the anointed one, Christ, with Belial? What part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? What in common do we have with idols? Yeah, absolutely. Nothing. Nothing. That's right. As God has said in verse uh, 16, What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? 
For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God yes, and they shall yes. be my people. Amen. So he calls the believer righteousness. Mm -hmm. He calls them light. He calls them Christ, the anointed one. He calls them the temple of God. And he says that they have no agreement with idols. And he says, you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. Remember, God told Moses, you tell those people I want to dwell with them. Yeah. But he got to make a little tent out there because they're not ready. They mm -hmm. haven't had the blood of Jesus shed for them. That's right. And so they make a tent and that Shekinah glory is over that tent. But now the blood has been shed and God who loves you so mm -hmm. much you, comes to live inside you. Praise God. And changes you mm -hmm. from glory to glory. Praise God. I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. John G. Lake's daughter was a friend of mine. And John G. Lake was in Africa when the bubonic plague came. And the people were afraid to bury the dead because they were afraid they'd get it. So he had a ministry, he and this black native pastor that worked with him, they would every day bury the dead. One day they put 30 people in a black mass grave. Mm. He told her that they would go into a home and they would take this one dead child lying next to its sibling who was sick. They'd take that child out and bury it and come back the next day and the other child would be sick, Jesus. dead. Jesus. Mm. And so the British hospital ships came and they said, you know, we've got preventatives for this. He said, I don't need them. They said, what? He said, no. He said, these people are dying of a bloody froth at the mouth. Just take some of that, put it under your, examine it under the microscope. They did. This germ activity just working alive. He said, now take, put, no, take it from their mouth and put it under the uh, microscope. They did and the germ activity was working alive. Now he said, take some of that bloody froth and put it in my hand and examine it under the microscope. They did. All that germ activity had ceased. They jump back. What is that? Mm. That, sirs, Greater. is the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that has made me free from the law of sin and death. Praise that God. is the law of the spirit of life. Law in Christ Jesus that has made me free from the law of sin and death. Yes, Blake had all amen. kinds of miracles, which you well know because yes. you got that book put into print. But he she did. told me that every morning her father got up, dressed himself up, cleaned up, had a full length of mirror. He looked in it. He see that. He said, "You see that suit of clothes? You see that man in that suit of clothes? God lives in that man in that suit of clothes. Everywhere that suit of clothes goes, God goes." So he was conscious that everywhere he, he went, was reminding himself yeah, that the greater day. one lives in me. Exactly. Wherever I go today, he's thinking in his being, the greater ones in me. Absolutely. One. We need to be more aware if we're born again and filled with the Holy Spirit that the greater one is in us. And we're his temple. What does that mean? Greater means that anything you run into, he's greater. Yes. Glory to God. Greater one. The you greater are the one. temple yeah. that he lives in. But it's not a temple that's just on a hill. He said, I that's will right. dwell in them. I will walk in yes, them. There it I is. will be their God and be my people. Based on that verse, he said, wherever this suit of clothes goes, God goes. That's why he knew he could walk in where the buponic plague was and he wouldn't be dead. Did you read 19? What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God? You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. That's our responsibility now. That's right. To glorify God in our body because these things are true. They've been done. We've been born again. We've been filled with the Holy Spirit. You have to keep conscious that, yeah. that is of that. Brother Hagen called it being God inside yes, minded. Yes, I remember that. Yes, he did. Being God inside minded. You have to be conscious of the fact, I'm a temple of God. Why don't you do certain things? The Holy Ghost is in me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want to take the Holy Ghost and set him down in front of an X-rated movie. No. Mm -mm. Now, he's in there and he's not going to leave you. But he is what the Bible calls grieved. 
Yes, that's right. And so he'll take, you know, he's grieved by your actions if you don't walk in love. And what does it mean, grieved? It means that he, he subsides. Mm -hmm. He's not in there that's in the greatest the and say. highest de degree. That's right. He's in there and he wants you and he loves you. And he wants you to manifest him. He wants it so that when you lay hands on the sick, they recover. That's right. Power. His power. power. He wants you to display that power. And his power is called the glory. The glory of God was in the Old Testament tabernacle, in the Old Testament temple. And the glory of God is in the glorious church. That's right. So when you become born again, he becomes Christ in you, the hope of glory. What does hope mean? It means I don't have it all yet. That's why believers can lay hands on the sick. Sure. And they'll recover. That's exactly right. You couldn't do it in your own strength. No. Mm -hmm. It's not anything just you as a person, but it's because you are the temple of God. That's right. And then as you read the word like the plan says, and you looking for the glory of God in there, the presence of God in all the scriptures. Praise God. Then the Holy Ghost is working on you. Now, the Holy Ghost... Ephesians 2 says, verse 19, Now you're no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. You're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone in whom all the building of God fitly framed Praise together God. grows into an holy temple. Yes, so we're the temple. And we're all building together. We're not on the outside anymore. No. Glory and to we, God. And he's in us individually, but then he's in the whole temple. That's right. He's in all the temple. The body congregate. The Holy Spirit is in there to manifest himself at your church. When you meet together, the assemble together. Uh, don't forget the assembling of yourselves together. That's so right. then there, it should be glory, and it's going to be in the glorious church, that when somebody walks in the back door, if they don't have an arm, it's going to grow on. If I they don't have a leg, wait. it's going to grow on. Oh, yes. I Hallelujah. And the glory, the very glory of God on your face is people going to follow you to church, to the church assembled, because we are to be a powerful, glorious church. And it's going to be that way. It's going to be. It's written. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.